Well, I think all these people here that they want to do useful things, but think about that. Take an example of SpaceX. Okay, this is the area. Traditionally, we would think this is exclusive for government to do it. Right. It's very high hurdle for te from a technological point of view, from a financial point of view, from a regulation point of view. Many people, I guess, they want to get into this area, but they feel just impossible. But what made you think you could do it? And you started this in 2001, right? Uh, 2002. 2002. But, but um, yeah, I can tell you the origin of SpaceX was really not from the standpoint of trying to create a company. Um, in 2001, I was talking to a friend of mine, and I was just wondering um, why we had not gone to Mars. Because if we had gone to the moon in 1969, then surely by now we should be very close to getting to Mars. Okay, that's your original question. Yeah. Why now we get into Mars? Yes. Why? Well, I, I, so I thought, well, I'll go on the NASA website to find out when we're going to Mars. Okay. And I went on the website and they couldn't find it. Um, and uh, and then I learned that that actually that had now been taken off of the NASA goals um, at at that time. Um, so I thought. Uh, what I would do is try to do a philanthropic mission um, to send a small greenhouse to the surface of Mars uh, because the public, tends, the public responds to precedents and superlatives. And this would be the furthest that life's ever traveled, the first life on, on Mars as far as we know, and you have this great chart of green plants on a red background. And I thought that this would perhaps get the public excited enough to increase NASA's budget um, so that we could kind of resume the dream of Apollo. Uh, that was actually the, the origin. And, and I actually, I went to Russia three times to try to buy um, some used ICBMs uh, to send okay. the uh, mission to, to Mars. And I did negotiate a deal, but, um, but I came to the conclusion that, um, that I was actually, my, my premise was, was incorrect. Um, I actually thought that the reason that we had not gone to Mars was because of a lack of will. Uh, but in fact, um, it, I, don't, I think the will is there, but then people must believe that there's a way. If, if the people think that there's that there's no, no chance of it being successful, then they will, they will give up. Um, so I, I decided that I, I had to, do, to try to start a company to reduce the, the cost of access to space, to improve rocket technology, because uh, it had been essentially in stasis uh, since the 60s. There's no fundamental improvement that's yes. occurred. In fact, it's, argue, it's, got, it's gotten worse on a, on a cost per unit mass to orbit basis. So, the, so the, that, that, was the prim, that was the basis for starting uh, SpaceX. Um, but at the beginning of SpaceX, I thought maybe there was a 10% chance of success. 10% uh, chance? Maybe, at most, yeah. So the tech, you took the risk? Um, yeah. 10%. I mean, it, it seemed like uh, if, 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 if there was not something, if something wasn't done to improve the, the uh, rocket technology, then we would never get there. So, so Russian did not sell the rocket to you, or you thought it's too expensive, or uh, so you want to develop your own? Uh, well, the, the, uh, they, they actually, I did, did come to terms with the, the Russians, but, um, but, but then the, the only reason that the rockets were, were lower cost was because of arms reduction talks, so that they were essentially scrap rockets. So even if um, you know, one could use those rockets, but once you ran out of the um, scrapped rockets, uh, because of arm, arm reduction talks, then, they were, then you'd be back up at the higher or high prices again. Mm -hmm. So it was at most a short-term uh, possibility. It would not result in a long-term uh, benefit. It would certainly not result in the establishment of a self-sustaining city on Mars, which is really, the, I think, the, the, the goal that we should have in the space program. OK, now you have the will. Now you did some uh, initial work. You contacted Russians, and you thought there there's no progress made in the last few decades, so there's a possibility. But then, rocket science is very hard uh, science. So you are not only a chief executive officer, but also chief technology officer. So your college degrees from business and physics. You, didn't, you only spent three days in a PhD program. So my guess is that I'm not guess, I'm pretty sure you're, you're self-taught. You learned all these hard science engineering, computer programming, physics, and all others by yourself, engineering. How did you do that? 
tell us the student that you can do that without going through the formal programs, basically. Oh, sure, you can learn much faster than the formal programs. You can, do fa you can um, learn faster than formal faster, programs. Tell faster. us, uh, share some secrets with us. How Just can you do that? Books. Huh? Just read, read a lot of books. Read a lot of books and talk to a lot of people. You can become a rocket scientist by reading books yeah. without... Well, and experimenting, of course. I mean, experiments and books. You need to, you know, because sometimes the things in the books are not correct. <laughs> um, okay. You know, but that's basically how it works. I mean, uh, you, can, you can learn things very quickly if you just read the books. I mean, it's all, information is all there. You just pick up the books, you learn and become an expert in this hard science engineering area. You could do that. Um, yeah, I mean, at the risk of sounding like a robot, uh, you, the, the data, the, your data rate in reading books is much faster than uh, in a lecture. Um, you can read information far, far faster than you can hear it. So then it's much faster to read. Well, I'm a little bit worried we'll be out of a job now if that's the case. <laughs> But Professor Zhu, that uh, we teach many physics courses here, right, for physics majors. You probably uh, have some questions here that uh, about uh, what courses there. Uh... Yeah, I think junior uh, students can, can self-study physics. Uh, but uh, anyway, the physics uh, is based on experiments, and in particular for the engineering, uh, hard technology, it also should uh, to, to do some, some experiments, uh, even to do some machine in, in the factory. Uh, how, how can you get such a real experience uh, uh, from self-study? And uh, I have another question about uh, uh, well, what kind of physics course do you like most? Uh, uh, which uh, fixed the cost and do you think uh, most uh, helpful for for your for your your company for your uh, uh, creative thinking for your uh, so so uh, wonderful uh, companies sure uh, actually the the just the, the the fundamentals of physics is uh, that's what's most helpful it, the the, the very framework of, of how to think about physics is by far the most helpful. Um, and to, to sort of understand you know, how did the first scientists learn anything um, and why, how did they change the way that they, they learned things? How did they change their, their framework of analysis over time as they learned that one mode was better than another? Um, this is extremely helpful to know. Um, so honestly, it's like physics 101 is like the if, if people really pay attention to Physics 101, that's the most valuable. Um, and then, I, I mean, I thought quantum mechanics was really interesting, too. Um, uh, it's just, it's amazing that quantum mechanics is true. It's, it's still hard to believe, really. You know. So I'm thinking that to put quantum mechanics as a required course for School of Economics and Management students in yeah. the future. <laughs> so, uh, it's a hard one, I have to tell you. It's that. a hard one? Which part is hard? Is math, mathematics part or principles part? Or which part is hard for new quantum tech? It's counterintuitive. It's almost. extremely counterintuitive. So that you can't just use the way that you normally would think about the way that reality works, which you can in many other areas. Um, so because you just don't have, your intuition is, is not a good guide, that makes quantum mechanics quite difficult. It also combines quite a lot of advanced math and statistics at the same time. So if, actually, if you're very good at statistics, then quantum mechanics, would, that would really help. Yeah. OK, I did statistics. Yeah. So I think statistics statistic. is quite hard, too. You, yeah. you like statistics? Um, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Statistics is very interesting. Very, very interesting. I, I think everyone should learn statistics, too. Everyone should learn. Yeah, very important. Because uh, okay. otherwise, you, you can get tricked too easily by these things. So it's, it's, as you know, there's that uh, famous saying, um, I, I'm not sure who it was, uh, maybe, Churchill or somebody said, there are lies, there are damn lies, and then there are statistics. That's right. <laughs> there are three types of lies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did Churchill say, say this? I think it was, maybe, I'm not, I'm certain. Huh? Israeli. Israeli, Israeli, Israeli oh, okay. said that. Israeli, okay. 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 Yeah, I know yeah. that. This is some British guy. <laughs> yeah. Very good. So now, um, so we have, this, uh, so it's been uh, 13 years since you started uh, SpaceX. 
I know your aspiration is to send human to Mars and with reu reusable uh, rockets reduce the cost by a factor of 10. Uh, I think ultimately a factor of 100. Ultimately a factor of 100, okay. Now, I remember you said in 2011 that at the time you said in 10 to 20 years you could put man or human on Mars. Now we are 2015, so that will actually happen, if your prediction is correct, will be 2020 or 2030. It's not that far away from now. Are you yeah, still I think, optimistic? I think about 10 years. In 10 years? Roughly, yeah. Roughly, by you. Yeah, that's certainly, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, there'll be a lot of others, not just me, but uh, we, you know, we have a lot of very talented team at the company, so. Uh, you know, there's 5,000 5, people at, at SpaceX, so. Yeah. It's not, it won't be easy, right, Use reusable uh, rockets, because NASA stopped space shuttle. True. It's a very expensive thing, so I'm not an uh, expert on that, but uh, I guess it's not that easy. So why are you so confident that you could do this? Um, well, I mean, at this point, I feel quite confident of at least achieving uh, boost stage reusability, uh, because we've, we've been able to land the boost stage twice in the ocean, um, and we've been able to at least hit the ship twice. Um, uh, on the second time, uh, it, it, it took several seconds for the rocket to explode. Um, so we're making progress. Um, I, I think in, I, I'm highly optimistic that in the next uh, 12 months or so that we will be able to land the boost stage safely and, and refly it. Um, I mean, that, that, that one is, I think, um, highly likely. Highly likely. High, 90% plus. Okay, um, what's, what's the probability in 10 years that we'll see a person on Mars? What's the probability? Um, well, I'd, I'd give the 10 years, I'd make that the sort of 50% uh, likely. 50%. Um, it sort of depends on what happens with the world and, uh, you know, but if, if current, if, if one were to extrapolate the current trends for SpaceX, I, I think 2025 is around you know, approximately correct. 2025. Uh, yeah, approximately. 10 years from now, so that's... Uh... Yeah, yeah, approximately. So, um, but, uh, I think the, the fact that reusability is important, uh, this is an example of where first principles analysis makes sense, because um, if you were to look, to, to look at, say, by, by analogy and say, well, let's look at uh, prior efforts to achieve reusability, such as the space shuttle right. um, or the Russian Buran program, Right. Um, and say, well, those attempts at reusability uh, did not result in any improvement in the cost of space flight. In fact, uh, they increased the, the cost of space flight. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the shuttle uh, uh, on a shuttle budget was about $4 billion a year, and uh, there were typically four flights per year, so obviously the cost was roughly a $1 billion a year. Right. Um, and this was much more than an expendable rocket of equivalent payload capability. So then people would look at this and say, well, based on that, uh, it would appear that reus reusability increases the cost, it does not decrease it. However, but this, is, this, is, um, but this, is, this is not true if you look at it from a first principle standpoint, because if you look at, say, what is the cost of the propellant uh, used, if, if you use a, a low cost propellant, such as refined jet fuel. Um, and in the case of our rocket, the propellant cost is approximately $300,000 per flight. Hmm. Uh, but the rocket costs 60 million. So uh, that's a pretty huge, uh, you know, difference. Um, you know, you've got the, the cost of propellant essentially half a percent of the, the cost of the rocket. Um, it's, you know, it's comparable to that of a large jet, essentially. Um, and, and so obviously if you can achieve reusability, uh, you can start to approach the cost per flight, uh, the, the, cost of, of, the cost per flight would asymptotically approach the cost of propellant. Um, you're factoring in uh, maintenance and, uh, and other, other issues. Um, and so if you, if, if, you know, if, if, if something similar to aircraft occurred with rockets, then um, you might have the cost of maintenance and so forth be uh, roughly equivalent to the cost of, cost of fuel as it is with airlines, um, which would mean, uh, you know, say a $600,000 cost per flight um, over time, which would therefore be a two order of magnitude reduction. So this is a, a really a, a good example to show that I think in terms of first principles, 
radically different from think uh, using analogy, right? right. Using exactly. analogy, you will not find anything possible, but uh, from the first principle. Uh, absolutely, and, and the same can be said of even building the rocket in a reusable configuration, uh, building a rocket whether expendable or reusable, to say what, what should a, a rocket cost? Um, one could look at, at what rockets have cost historically and say, well, that's what rockets will cost. Or you could say, what are the material constituents of the rocket? Uh, if, you, if you were to say, what, what is the weight of aluminum, titanium, ink canal, uh, carbon fiber, and other elements? And if you had them sort of arranged in a pile in raw materials on the room and had a magic wand and could rearrange the elements into the shape that you want, then uh, that, would dis that would describe the minimum possible cost of any, any given physical object. Um, and so then, it, then the trick is how you get them in the shape effectively. Um, and if you do that, uh, you can see that, that the actual cost of the raw materials in a rocket, again, expendable or, or reusable, is, is quite small. It's only a few percent of the price. Hmm. So then the trick is, how do you rearrange those uh, raw materials in, into the shape you want efficiently? Well, the lesson is, uh, again, go, go back to the first principle. Right. Everything goes back to the fundamental assumptions. Um, I know that your dream your aspiration is to send humans to Mars, but your dream is to build a city on Mars. Is that true? Well, if you think of it sort of broadly, the, the history of human civilization will fundamentally bifurcate along two directions. Either we will become a multi-planet civilization, be out there exploring the stars, or we will be a one-planet civilization until some eventual extinction event, whether uh, self-inflicted or natural. And, uh, you know, I think the the sort of former is the better way to go. Um, and in order for that to be the case, we, we have to establish a self-sustaining civilization on some planet. Mars is really the only realistic possibility. And, um, and so I think we should try to do that. Um, and this is the first time in the four and a half billion year history of Earth that it's been possible for some life form to extend life as we know it beyond Earth. That window may be open for a long, period, long time or it may be open for a short time. The prudent thing would be to assume that it's open for a short time and take action while we can. Very good. So that's really uh, your dream. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think One that's of dreams. In, in, the, in the sort of context of existential threat minimization, I think it is uh, something we should aspire to. Uh, from the pr first principle of physics, you think that's uh, also possible? Yeah, absolutely.